Sure. It's time for you to escape. Let's join me to welcome you. Here. Thank you. Uh, all right. So I'm here to tell you about remote working and why you should or shouldn't embrace it. You totally should because it's awesome. All right. Thanks for having me. That's <laughs> All right, let's try that again. This talk might be better entitled How to Do Remote Properly and When Not to Bother. So, a little bit about me first. Uh, my name is Toby. Uh, I hire software engineers for Automatic. Um, you may know us as the company behind WordPress.com, Jetpack, Gravatar, WooCommerce, and a bunch of other things. Um, right now, there are 854 of us in 69 countries speaking 84 languages. We've been distributed since day one, and that's nearly 14 years ago. So what's the difference between remote and distributed? In a remote setup, there's an office somewhere, and one or more people work elsewhere. In a distributed company, there's no office, so everybody works elsewhere. The first setup's more common, so I'm going to refer to remote working today, but everything I'm talking about applies to distributed companies as well. So what's so great about working remotely or employing people who are, who are remote. In both cases, the major benefit is vastly expanded opportunity. Let's say you're a typical Silicon Valley company and you're only looking to hire developers from inside the US. According to Stack Overflow's most recent developer survey, you're excluding 77% of the 20 million developers who visit Stack Overflow. Talent is equally distributed around the world, but opportunity is not. Remote and distributed companies change this equation and provide opportunities on both sides that would otherwise have lost. Before we get too much further, let's define what we're talking about and what we're not. Remote is not just about being able to work from home in your pajamas, although that is a fringe benefit. What remote working is really about is flexibility. Flexibility for people with family commitments, with educational commitments, with disabilities, or who live in other time zones to work on their terms and to be able to contribute meaningfully without being physically present at a particular time and place. Remote working is not easy. Uh, in fact, for remote working done badly can be incredibly damaging. It's all too easy to, to develop habits that breed inefficiency, exclusion, and an unhealthy working environment. It takes a ton of commitment and hard work to pull off remote working correctly. But it's absolutely worth it in terms of the access to talent and opportunity that a global focus enables. So Automatic has been doing this for a little while, so we have a few tips for you. The first is to act as though everyone is remote. The second you have a meeting with nine people in a room and one on Zoom, you create two groups of people. It's far more inclusive if that meeting is ten people. The second is to default to asynchronous communication. When you let go of the idea that everyone has to be available right this second, you give people permission to use the flexibility of remote working groups. One thing that makes asynchronous working work is to document absolutely everything. At Automatic Open Source is our culture, and it's a foundational principle. And documentation goes along with that. But too often, documentation is written after the fact and only about the end state. We document everything as we go along, from the original idea through all the discussions and the decisions and dead ends to the final product. That way, our documentation has context, which is something that's usually locked up in somebody's head. You also need to be quite intentional about building a culture. When you're remote, there's no such thing as bumping into the CEO in the break room or heading out for spontaneous drinks after work. Providing the, the opportunity and, crucially, the permission for socializing and fun, it's is important. It helps create a shared identity. It is important to get together in person once in a while. At Automatic, we do team meetups once or twice a year, uh, and our all company grand meetup once a year. So these are opportunities to not only get a bunch of work done in a really accelerated way, but they create and cement bonds that carry us through the rest of the year. The key with meetups is to make the best use of them by being fairly ambitious about what you want to accomplish, but not to rely on them too much. So conversely, there are a few notes. The first is the conversations about work that exclude your colleagues. 
Don't talk about work issues on the phone, in person, or in a DM. Do it in the public Slack chat. If you can't do it in public, make sure you recap the conversation in public forum. I've been in a situation at a previous job where I had to scrap a week's worth of work and start over again because I missed out on one conversation. There's nothing that kills morale like having your time wasted. As with most workplaces, uh, in a remote environment, it's dangerous to assume. Communicate. Uh, and automatically have a saying that communication is the oxygen of a distributed company, and that is 100% correct. If you're going to use a remote model, don't negate the benefits by insisting that people stick to a particular schedule. This just tells your people that you don't trust them, and people don't respond well to that. Embracing a remote model means embracing a certain loss of control, and that only functions if you trust your people. And finally, don't call it an experiment or leave yourself on the skate patch. You have to commit. Trust goes both ways, so allow your team to trust you. Ultimately, though, remote isn't for everyone. When shouldn't you bother? From the perspective of the business, in, uh, implementing remote in an existing environment takes time and resources that you may not be able to commit right now. It is not something that you can do halfway. From an individual perspective, ask yourself if you'd be suited to remote work. Or do you perhaps need the structure of an office and a commute room? Do you need to be around people? Another thing to consider is that when you onboard people into a remote company, a lot of the time you're onboarding them into remote work at the same time. Getting it right becomes even more crucial. So if your turnover in the first year is relatively high, you need to fix your onboarding process before you introduce the complexity of a remote environment. Junior developers ramp up the complexity even higher. You're onboarding them into develop as well as into your company and likely into remote work. It's a super advanced and it's not for the it's something that we haven't been able to do at Automatic, although it is something we're working on. So going back to my original title, remote working, why you should or shouldn't embrace it. You should embrace remote working if you're looking to expand your options past those that are in your immediate area. You should embrace remote if you're aware of what it takes to succeed and you're committed to doing it. And you should embrace remote if it's a fit for your values, your circumstances, and again, thanks for having me. Um, I think we've got a little bit of time for questions. Anybody have any? So the question was, what's the best practices for selecting team members for my work? Um, our hiring process is fairly intensive uh, and it simulates the, the normal working environment as, as best we can. Um, so we have a, a paid trial that is done entirely remotely. Our entire uh, interview process is done remotely. So it's very, very similar to the normal working environment. Um, so that works really well for us. It exposes um, uh, inability to or People who are not suited for the remote environment, it, it exposes that fairly quickly. Um, generally speaking, what we look for in people are just communication first and foremost. Um, you know, people who, who over communicate are really the ones who do well. So the question is whether there's any online resources about hiring people remotely. Something that we're working. On. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's in progress. So not yet, but soon. Around the globe. 
so the question was whether we have any, uh, whether I have any tips about uh, organizing remote retreats. Um, it's a little bit different for us because we have to, we've gotten to the point now where we have to be able to fit you know, 850 odd people. So um, at the moment we're sort of um, constricted to resorts and, and uh, larger convention type destinations. Um, but internally, um, because we do meetups you know, twice a year per team and there's so many teams, um, we sort of maintain an internal blog that just compares um, destinations, where we stayed, what the internet was like, what the cost was per person, um, how much travel time there was involved in getting there. Um, yeah, so basically just give it a shot, but document everything so that you don't make the same mistake twice. Do you think you guys might ever um, make that external? I'll just add or maybe available. Is there anything like sensitive in there? That sounds like that sounds like exactly what we think. Yeah, never say never. I don't think it's, um, I'm not sure if it's on our list of things to do at the moment, but it's it's definitely a very useful resource that we probably should consider making some elements of the public. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody.